hustle every day to find picks. You can tell us if you want to get rich. It's population. We robbing underdog and prize picks. We the best in this biz. You ain't telling us shit. It's population. We love making money quick, fast, cooking up a team card. The whole crew about to smash. It's population. We do it for the fam, so everybody let's catch. The dopest team you ever seen. Winning money, stacking G's. Bookies setting traps, but they'll never catch me. Some people get addicted like raps to the cheese. But I got one obligation to bring Johnny to his knees. Holding back the props to the morning he knows. They'll be fishing in the shack, plotting nukes with the pros. Only with crime, never revolt. And I'm in the mop, I'm egos. We go with honest, we're seeking the bloods. We know when the fucking cheat goes. Parking that I'm sweating, they can't be good for my health. Some might call it making bets. I call it investing in myself. I'm picking props like stocks. Population for the win. Got my slips in by the buzzer now. Let the game begin. It's population. It's population. It's population. We do it for the fans, so everybody, let's play. All right, what is up, crew? We got a um, last week of Australian women's basketball WNBL this week. Um, it's been a fun ride on these uh, international journeys we've done late night. Um, a lot of fun. Um, yeah, sad that's coming to an end. This is the last week of the regular season, and then we'll have uh, playoffs, which are just four teams going at it. Um, so semifinals and then the finals. So we'll see if we get props for those, but yeah, I want to finish out strong. We had a couple of successful nights recently last week. Um, we had a complete sweep the other night, and then the night after that, we missed by one player um, out of all the prop targets. So still going on a heater with these, and yeah, let's finish strong. We want to cover the game that's tonight and then a game that is tomorrow night. Um, just briefly go over those and our favorite uh, player targets and which props we're, we're looking at. How you doing, E? Doing well, man. Back home from my little vacation, birthday break, and ready to hit the ground running. Like I said, we had a we had a really good last week, and hoping to finish strong here. Yeah, glad glad you're back for for the final week, because um, we'll definitely cook it up together um, leading up until tip off. Definitely need to pay attention to lineups. We've seen some changes with starting lineups, um, and we usually get those lineups about twenty about 15 to 20 minutes before tip off. So definitely stay on top of that. And if you're part of discord, we will drop the starting lineup right before tip, but um, we'll just go off of what teams have currently been running their starting lineup, um, which you see here on the sheet. I'll start with the first game, which is tonight, um, 2 30 AM Eastern. Um, so somewhat of a normal start time, but yeah, we have the red hot Townsville fire who's number one in the league right now um, record-wise and on a 10-game winning streak. And they travel to Bendigo and um, face off against Bendigo. It's a 158.5 total, somewhat okay total. Um, normally they sit around 162 to 164. Um, but I think a lot of this is due to the inefficiency lately of Bendigo's offense and how stout the Townsville defense has been as of late. So let's look at the team stats. Um, Bendigo is pretty much average across the board and everything. They're six in points per game, um, six in points uh, allowed. Um, this, and this is out of eight teams. So, um, and they're third in rebounding. That's their one specialty because they have the best rebounder in the game in um, NLA Miley. And they're six in assists. While Townsville, they can rack up points. They're fourth in the league in points per game and they're first in points allowed. So they allow the least amount of points overall. And they're kind of bottom tier in rebounding. They That's where they kind of struggle at times. Um, we'll get into that. And then they are fifth in uh, assists per game. But yeah, let's start with the, the visiting team. We just saw an amazing game um, from Townsville. Um, and went down to the final buzzard for them to maintain their 10-game win streak. They pulled it off against Sydney Flames. Um, there was about a little less than two seconds on the clock. And they were down by one inbound to Tiana Hawkins. She throws up a little hook shot and ends the game, game winner. And I want to start with her. She is um, 
man, has she just been playing so well. And all everything that they do offensively besides going to Samuelson for outside shooting, everything is focused and runs through um, Hawkins, the entire offense. And she's carrying them. And now she's making a real late push for MVP. You know, it's Kayla George sitting at top for a long time. But I think Tiana with that game winner and what and the points she's putting up and the rebounding, um, she's really making a push for MVP. So the M- the WNBL awards ceremony, I believe, is either this I think this weekend after the final games of the regular season. And so they'll announce the MVP during the ceremony, I think either this weekend or early next week. Um, so yeah, she's got a lot to prove here and continue to carry the team. Um I think her point prop should be around 17 and a half. She's absolutely destroyed Bendigo in both meetings. These teams have played twice. In the most recent meeting, she dropped 32 points. She was red hot from three. She made four threes. She can't hit threes, but that's not her specialty. Her specialty is being in the low post, getting those um, layups and small short range uh, buckets. So, yeah, got to love her here. And in the first matchup earlier in the season, she had 21 points. So hopefully they keep it under 18 points for a point prop. She usually sits around um, 16 and a half or 17 and a half. Um, but she's been on a, on a heater lately, so you never know. They might bump it to 18 and a half. But she's probably my favorite Townsville Fire player. And then, yeah, um, Carly Samuelson. Let's talk about her. <laughs> she is playing lights out. Um She leads the league in field goal percentage, shooting 56% from the field. And what's crazy about that stat is, you know, you see most players that lead the league in field goal percentage are shooting near the basket, um, high percentage shots. But majority of her shot volume is from behind the three-point line, and she still leads the league in field goal percentage. So that's kind of crazy. Over the last, like, five or six games, she's averaging almost 20 points a game. She's also a key part of their offense, but – it's when they need an outside shot or a three pointer. Um, she she'll step up for that. But again, everything funnels through um, Hawkins. And then Steph Reed, uh, she's been a shell of herself since her back injury. Um, she's not looking to attack the basket at all, um, and only looking to pass. I, um, her point prop was 12, 12 and a half last game. She only had four points. She barely shot. Um, so it could go down to eleven and a half. Um, but she still leads the league in assists. Um, averaging around 6.3. So want to get your thoughts on that, whether it's better to target her assist prop here because in both meetings she had, she cleared it. She had seven assists in the most recent one, and then she had eight assists in the early meeting um, in December this season. It's a great pairing if you want to pair it with Hawkins, or you could just just go straight up under her points as well if she continues to not shoot. Um, But, I, I mean, we watch these games early in the season. Steph Reed was very aggressive and would attack the basket and draw fouls and rack up points. And now you don't see that at all. Um, so what are, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on on the fire? And before I hand it off this, Samuelson, I wanted to point out um, in both meetings, she barely shot and did not score. Um, she had six points in the first meeting, only took two shots in the most recent meeting and had two points. And a lot of that is because they were trapping her and trying to prevent her from getting her shot from the three-point line. We could see the same today, or they could focus all their attention on Tiana. One of them is going to have more open shots than the other. So I want to hear your thoughts um, on that. Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, Steph Reed there. You know, her, her back doesn't look the same. And you can even see that in, like, you know, not only her overall field goal attempts, but also her three-point attempts. Like, that's yeah. basically non-existent now. So I, I think I totally agree there with you. Um the points under could be a little risky if they, you know, overcorrect and bump her a little too much. But yeah. uh, I do like the assist call. I think that's that's real sharp. You know, they're they're still playing well as a team and as a whole. So I don't think that's going to change. And really, her back issue shouldn't affect that part of her game. So I like that call. Um, I'm probably going to ride with you with uh, Tiana again. I mean, she's been almost unstoppable even in these double team situations they're still finding a way to work her in the offense and being able to if she's getting trapped down low she's kicking it out to somebody else and then a lot of the times their double team will turn around for that and bam she's open again for a step back so i think even trying to scheme a defense to slow her down would be kind of a tough sell you know nicholson being back and i wouldn't say she's at 100 percent, but she's at least 
acting like she's 100% out there, you know, as far as energet energy and trying to just, you know, be a presence on the floor. So any point, you know, we could see that flip kind of switch there, but she doesn't really have that great of a track record in this meeting anyways, like Hawkins did. So I don't see a lot changing here from the previous two games that we've seen. Um, I think those are pretty sharp calls. For Samuelson, I felt pretty good about going under on her points in the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. um, she really just struggled against this team. And was she in foul trouble in the pre in, in this last meeting as well? Yeah, she was. She had three early fouls, and so she played only 25 minutes. And and she plays huge minutes, I mean, as um key key part um, starter. So yeah and and she's another one of those you know home road clay kind of players you know we've seen that she's really just been unstoppable almost at some point at home games but in these road games been you know a little bit of a different story so i'm not going to advocate for her under points today but you know you get what you get if she's if her three balls land in then she's probably going to have a good game if not game's probably going to go like the other two games yeah, um, glad you brought up Nicholson. Um, in that their most recent game against um, Sydney Flames, was it over the weekend? She re-injured her foot in the first quarter, did not Ooh. return. So we'll look out for that. I imagine that she'll sit again because yes, this is a, a important game. Townsville needs a win in order to maintain that um, number one spot. Um, but it, really, it's the number one and number two spot uh, seeds get uh, home court advantage. So it's not like do or die for them. Um, super crucial. But I think uh, since she didn't return, she re-injured it. I would not be surprised if she sits in this one and Courtney Woods fills in for her. So if that's the case, yeah, they're going to really have to lean on Carly and Tiana because, yeah, Steph Reed's not getting it done with her scoring. Shiley Heal being a new part of the team, she's not really scoring at all um, and very low shot volume. And Roof is Roof. I mean, she's going to take maybe one or two threes and try to get it done inside the in, inside the paint, but she's not a primary scoring option. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that. So I think um, if Lauren Nicholson is indeed out, like we think, um, I think maybe just play a card with Samuelson points and then, and a different card play Hawkins points, although they could both get it done. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. And hopefully we'll get the news in advance and be able to react to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of roof, um, she's a key part of the rebounding. She's like fifth in the league in rebounding. She averages about 8.9 rebounds. We got her prop at 9.5 last game. And she cleared that. I think we're around 11. Although her rebound history in this one is not as great. I mean, she's had eight and about eight, eight in both meetings. So it's right there on the line. If you want to consider it, let's see if they keep it at nine and a half. Um, I imagine it so since she averages a little less than nine. But that's a, a prop if you're looking for um, secondary filler piece. But it's hard to trust her scoring at times since everything is so focused on um, Hawkins and Samuelson, and then Akuso when she checks in as well. They love to feed it inside the paint. Yeah. Did um, you have anything else on them, or you want to move to Bendigo? Yeah, I think that was going to be it, honestly, from that side. Um, just keeping out for the news. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to move on. Next side. Yeah, so this is the tricky side, right? So Bendigo, they um were somewhat eliminated eliminated from playoffs um they have like an outside chance of getting that last four spot they would need to win this game and then they would need um perth to lose their last two games so perth plays twice this week i i don't see that happening so they're pretty much out of it but they're playing their last home game um and yeah they just been really struggling kelsey griffin returned one of their primary scorers um, last game, the most recent uh, game over the weekend, she also looked like a shell of herself. I mean, it was her first game in over like almost two months. Um, I we'll see if we get props for her. I, I maybe we 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 had her props all season long. 
Uh, maybe now that they see that she played last game, we might get them, but we'll have to see what the lines are. I mean, she, yeah, she she was not very um, active offensively. And then Miley, the reigning MVP, um, she's really struggling to find her shot and score. Um, she's still getting it done in the glass, number one rebounder in the league, number one offensive rebounder in the league, averaging three offensive rebounds uh, per game. Her, her rebound line is usually around 11, um, so it's a high line. Um, but yeah, I mean, if they keep her points at 16 and a half, I think you'd always consider the under here. Um, but I will say the best way to attack Townsville is in the paint because Roof is, is somewhat of a solid defender, but she can get blown by, um, from cuts to the basket and, uh, drives. So yeah, it might be a little bit of a sweat, but it's, I just noticed that she's just, her outside shot is way off lately. Sometimes she can hit a, a couple threes, but it's just not there right now. And then you got to choose between the Wilsons, uh, Kelly and Alex. So in the most recent game, they had Alex come off the bench, and they also had Alicia Froling come off the bench, and they went with uh, Big McKay instead. But off the bench, um, Froling and um, Alex Wilson both played big minutes, key minutes. Um, and, yeah, it's always tricky choosing between which one's going to go under, especially with Kelsey Griffin back in the mix. Um, Kelly looks to pass first before shooting, but her point prop is always so low at seven and a half. Um, and then Alicia Froling has been our, our absolute under wagon, um, pretty much all season. However, she does have some success against roof and for the reasons I said earlier inside the paint, um, she had 12 points, not really getting it done rebounding one, one rebound, in the most recent meeting. Um, but then the first meeting, she had 13 points, three rebounds. So, yeah, the rebounding's not there in both meetings, uh, but I've seen her get some offensive rebounds. Um, I think she's averaging around 2.6 offensive rebounds. Um, that's where a lot of her rebounds come from. Um, so if, I, I imagine they keep her PRA at 17.5. You can maybe consider that under. Um, but being at home and final home game, makes me a little bit worried, especially since she's coming off the bench, going against bench pieces um, of Townsville, like Akuso. So, yeah, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts? There, I feel like there's some unders to be had here, but there's also the fear of Bendigo playing at home in their final home game. Yeah, um, I definitely had a couple of interests in, in a few unders with you there as well. Um Kelly Wilson under points, you know, it's going to be a low bar, but so is her shot volume. Yeah. Um, I didn't mind Alex Wilson's assist initially, but I think like you said, her coming off the bench, that kind of worries me. Um, she, I mean, she, they look good like her and for link, you know, still coexist. And, but uh, seeing some of those numbers drop off, the minutes not dropping off, but I think just the the fundamentals of the offense and running with a second unit now is totally changing her game. And I bet if we looked at her her potential assist, they're probably way, 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 way down. So this could be, you know, kind of an interesting spot because they've left her assist pretty juiced, um, just kind of based on history and recent games. So I'm curious if we get it at like six, maybe six and a half, because it was six and a half, I think, last game, right? Five and a half. For uh, five and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no. For Alex Wilson. Oh, Alex. Um, I don't know if we had. She had assist prop last game. Maybe I could be crazy. Um, but, I always but, but, get them, them confused the Wilson. <laughs> but um, yeah, Kelly. Kelly has been all the up. Kelly Wilson's been all the way up to around six. They dropped her down to five and a half um, last game, and um, they might have had a assist prop for Alex, but yeah. Well, maybe not. Um. This seems just interesting. You know, I want to take unders, and if they were on the road, I would s snap take up a few of them. Yeah. Um, Miley's interesting. You know, I'm definitely – I'm curious to see the the Hawkins-Miley matchup down low for, you know, arguably two of the most motivated players that will be out there. Um, we could see – you know, I, I do like the rebound call that you had for Miley just kind of based on that fact if we think they're going to rumble – mostly down low, then we could see a ton of rebound opportunity going out between the two of those. 
Yeah, for sure. And especially since uh, Froling's not really getting it done rebounding and McKay as well. Um, they're going to have to lean on Miley to get it done. Um, yeah, the, 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 all season long, the problem with Bendigo is they run one of the deepest rotations in the league. Um, they split up the minutes a lot. Um, so even when you see players like uh, Froling and Alex Wilson come off the bench, they're still playing in big minutes. And it's all a lot of it's performance-based. So Alex Wilson and over the weekend or most recent game, she had two PRA going into the fourth quarter, and we had the under on her seventeen and a half PRA, and we were like, "Oh, this is this is beautiful, right?" She goes absolutely nuclear in the fourth quarter, and then ends up playing the entire fourth quarter because how she was shooting lights out from three, and she had she finished she cleared the PRA and had like nineteen or twenty PRA in the fourth quarter, so she can get hot from three, and if her shooting is going well, she's going to play more minutes. If she's Obviously, if she's struggling with her shot, her minutes go way down, and they lean on other players because um, they have a very deep bench that the coach likes to go to. So, yeah, you're you're basically betting that they're gonna have an off shooting night when if you take one of the unders, um, yeah. for Alex or or Alicia Froling as well. Yep, oh, totally agree. Um, yeah. And we also got to watch out for if they're actually going to go with that same starting lineup or yeah. are we going to see, you know, them go back to the old one. Mm-hmm. Um, Griffin, she definitely did not look the same at all. Like mm-hmm. I, I did end up getting a chance to go back and rewatch that game. And, you know, she, her, she had a presence on the floor and it looked good in like spurts, but yep. the overall pace of the game, like she just doesn't look physically ready. Not conditioned at all. Yeah. She looked gas on the, on the sideline. Yeah, it's gonna be tricky t- um, tonight because um, you obviously have to play a Bendigo player um, to pair with the the a f- a fire player, which I feel much more confident on. Um, so we're gonna have to see what the lines are, and we're gonna have to see what the lineup is, the starting lineup, um, for really hone in on final cards. But it's just kind of like where we initially stand right now. I think uh, just to go back to considering Miley's rebound and under her points if it stays at sixteen and a half. And then choosing between the Wilsons for their under. Um, okay, well, let's just briefly touch on the game tomorrow night. Um, this game, this game should be really good. So, um, it's a one seventy total, which is massive for WNBL. Like I said, it normally is around one sixty two to one sixty four. It's one of the highest totals I've seen for WNBL, and I think the main reason is that Adelaide. Um, since all their key pieces have been gone, they're just running one of the fastest pace in the league right now. And they just push push the tempo um, with all these young players they have filling in now. Since Talbot's gone, Bell's gone, and Borlase is gone. And yeah, so you're going to get a lot of shots going up. And Perth um, has dominated them in both uh, meetings. So if you look at the matchups previously, you see uh, Bibby dropped 29 points. Um, the most recent one, and uh, I remember we watched this game together, and she would not miss from three. And then she had 25 points in the first meeting earlier this season. And, um, yeah, Scherf got it done with her PRA in both meetings. Um, Amy had some success. Um, and Sammy, uh, man, it's so hard to choose with her. <laughs> She's so up and down. But, yeah, this is a, this is a must-win for Perth. they got to maintain that last playoff spot. They're on a win streak right now. Um, they are on the road and um, playing at Adelaide. So um, they're nine and a half point favorites uh, for good reason because of how well they've been playing in the win streak and Adelaide basically being a skeleton crew of themselves. So um, I like all the scoring upside here for Perth. Um, I think we go right back to Bibby. I imagine she'll be right back at 13 and a half because she didn't clear that last in her last game. She finished with 11 points. She did not take a shot in the third quarter. Um, I think they go right back to her in this matchup with her success here. And then, yeah, Scherf dominated her PRA in both meetings, and I think she shows up again in a key game. And then in secondary pieces, you can consider Atwell's PRA. She'll she'll rebound and play make at times and, and get you about 10 to 12 points. So, And then Sammy, I'm just going to stay away. She's just <laughs> too unpredictable. Lately, she's just been clearing her point, probably not – getting it done with the PRA because of Robbie Ryan getting a lot of the playmaking done and rebounding. So yeah, I mean, 
if you wanted to take a stab at her points in a card, I totally get it. What are your thoughts on Perth Lynx on the road? Yeah, I'm going to go right back to Bibby. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm really hoping here in this situation that price picks kind of continues their little trend of the overcorrection on bibs. So I'm really hoping we get her actually at 11 and a half or maybe even a flat 12 this time. You know, being a little a little hopeful, but I think that we actually could legit see lines open at that. Um, and man, her two games, she just absolutely went off. And honestly, I love those uh, at least top three plays that you had mentioned for the links here. Um, you know, maybe no, don't go too crazy with stacking, you know, three I'll feel comfortable with at least two pieces from the link side of things. Three might be pushing it. You might need to get a little creative, like hit some individual props instead of, you know, the PRA or straight up points. But sure, lover PRA, um, Bibby points. I think that's a great call. And if hey, you what really about Scherf's assist too, are you a pair with Bibby as well? Yeah, I think honestly, Scherf and um, even Sammy, you know, she hasn't really been doing the R or the A lately, but in the, the two games, I believe she had like five and six assists against them. Eight so, and um, five, yep, yep. Yeah, eight and five. So at least there's somewhat of a pattern there, and maybe if there's a game that she's going to be more involved, this could be it. Um, Definitely not advocating, but if you're just trying to branch out and you have too much Sherf, or if you're trying to play Sherf's PRA and want to pair it with something, could be some reasonable plays. Um, and then at will, PRA or rebounds and mm -hmm. light, light exposure. That's it. Yeah, it's always light with her because you don't, you know, if her three ball is not falling, she's not going to get it done scoring. Um, she'll, I mean, she'll get some like fast break broken plays or cuts the basket, but yeah. I will say um, that that connection between Scherf and Bibby on that cut where Bibby comes out on the top, comes off a screen and, and runs uh, on the cut, and Scherf always looks for her on that cut to the basket. And it's, uh, it's definitely a money well of theirs and great correlation when you pair um, Scherf's assist with Bibby points. So. Yeah, and, and this game, we know that Talbot's not going to be there, so they're strictly just going to have Monroe covering Scherf, and then it's going to be up to whatever filler piece to pick up that slack, and it ain't Talbot this time. That's right. That's right. Well, okay, you brought up Monroe, so let's move to the home team, Adelaide, Adelaide Lightning. They have nothing to play for. The bottom two team in the league, right behind UC Capitals. Monroe... Torched them both meetings. Oh, good old Monroe. Um, mm -hmm. She had 17 points in the first meeting, and then 20 or in the most recent, and 23 points in the first meeting. Um, her point prop in the most recent game was 13 and a half, which is really juice for her. She's normally around 11 and a half or 12 and a half. They might bump her to 14 and a half because she easily cleared this in her most recent game. Are you interested in her points given her history and how much they need her? Because they don't really have that much scoring options at this point. Yeah, I, I think honestly, sh she's still a great piece here for the team. Um, we know the Lynx, they're really solid on the perimeter defense, yeah. but struggle on the inside. You know, it's yeah. basically just Scherf and kind of throw Bibby, uh, Bibby and Robbie in the mix there. But um, Monroe's, he, she's looked reinvented lately. You know, <laughs> there's, there's some uh, fresh gas in those legs and, mm -hmm. you know, I'll at least give them the credit for with this being a home game for the lightning. They really, really get up for that home crowd. Like no matter what it's going to be, this is their actual last game of the season. Correct. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Um, and I believe it's sold out if I'm not mistaken. Um, okay. I know that they had, they, they were making some comments about it on their Twitter earlier. There's limited seating or limited tickets available. So this is going to be pretty packed out, you know, home spectacle. This team's always gotten up for the home crowd. If that's one thing they've done all season is at least kept it competitive at the home games. Um, so yeah. Monroe definitely love that call there. Um, and I think the points, even if it gets bumped, it's still probably in consideration. Um, 
If the points get bumped, I think we might get a chance to look at the PRA this time because I know that's been a little bit of an up and down for us. But if it's under, I think, 24, she's got some really good rebound upside here. And um, with Talbot out, she's actually had a few more assists and or potential assists in the mix. So I think we're not just strictly getting the rebound for the PRA upside this time. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, we need to look at really need to price shop and see what they drop her lines at. Cause they really, um, I feel like out of everyone, um, they are probably going to um, adjust her lines the most in this game. So definitely need to look at what, what the lines are, um, initially, and they'll probably keep adjusting, um, prior to tip. Um, and then what about Mansfield? So she's had success in this, uh, matchup and she's been leaned on since Talbot has, has left, um, with their ACL injury. She had 14 points, three rebounds, four assists in the most recent one, and then she had 11 points, three rebounds, and five assists. Are you more interested in her assist to pair with Monroe or her PRA? I guess let's say her PRA, if they keep it at um, 20 and a half. I, my gut instinct was her PRA, just seeing her shot volume slightly go up as expected last game, and then um, – she just really did everything. I mean, she rebounded well. She had a, you know, assist rating is still there. Um, and as long as I think it's not over anything over 21 and a half, I might be a little bit more uncomfortable with. But if it opens 21 and a half and under, I think it's still in a great spot. Yeah. And, and she should shoot a lot better from three um, at home, too. And yeah, the pace that they're going to play. Yeah, I, I like the PRA. Um, a little bit of a tough matchup on the perimeter um, against Sammy and Amy, but she's shown that she can get still get it done. She's, I mean, right there at 14 points and uh, 11 points. So um, I, I, that's why I probably feel more comfortable with her PRA because we know she can rack up the RA because um, she could easily hook her points um, just due to the matchup and if her three points not falling. So. Yeah, I'm with you on the PRA, and then secondary for me would, would be her assist if it stays less than five and a half. They had it at four and a half um, before, but then they kept bumping it up. Um, so I think it'll I think it'll be at five. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, last time we had Adelaide on the on the board, we only got Mansfield and Monroe, and then they put Borlace on there. But I don't think they realize that Borlace is out with for unknown reasons. They say injury, but. Uh, I don't think she's with the team. I, there's something going on, but yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that they realize this, that she's not playing anymore and that we don't, they don't put it on their board and I'm hoping we get a third player. And if we do the most common sense um, move would be to go with Whittle. Cause she's like the third most productive player. Um, Cause all these other two um, spots on the team are interchangeable. They, they rotate them in and out. They don't play deep minutes between Brooke and Simon. So I'm hoping we get Whittle props. Let's see if we do. Let's look out for her PRA. She does it all. She'll rebound, she'll play make, and she'll score. So and she was very successful um, in the most recent meeting. She had 23 points, six rebounds, and two assists. Um, let's see what she had. In the first meeting, she had 12 points and six rebounds and three assists. So very consistent um, on the glass and with her playmaking there. So let's see. I don't know. Um, I think if it's around, I, I imagine if they give us her props, they're just going to open it up at her season average. So I think it would probably be 20 and a half, which I would really like. Yeah. Um, so especially with new players that they're dropping for the first time, they're basically just going to take the season average. And it'll probably be six or six and a half rebounds. Yep. Um, and a lot of the times they'll, they'll do the season average. And then if there's more than like one game sample, they'll probably go back, add up the two and then, you know, find the average of that. So we could even get something, you know, earlier on in the season when she wasn't playing heavy minutes, you know, that could yeah. actually benefit us. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Cause she wasn't playing as big as minutes as she is now and leaned on as much, um, earlier in the season. Cause now, I mean, they really need her with Talbot out and Bell and Borley. So. Look out for that. Um, that'd be that'd be good. If not, we're just gonna have to do. We're gonna have to go with two two Adelaide players again. But I I like both spots for them. So um, yeah. I think we have a lot of options tomorrow night versus ten tonight 
since uh, Bendigo is going to be very hard to call. Um, okay. Uh, before we sign off, did uh, did you have any um, early NBA leans to leave everyone with? Um, let's see. I didn't have anything as of yet that really was eye popping. Um, you know, it is it is Tuesday, so we're gonna throw some caution out. Um, I will say at least the the taco that they have up currently for Matthew uh, Chuck. Two and a half shots on goal. That's pretty good. Um, Tampa Bay plays at a super fast pace. So that is probably going to be a solid one for us. Um, ooh, tonight's slate is going to be interesting. Got a lot it's of big. fun teams. Yeah. It, we have uh, 10 games today and nine tomorrow. So it's going to be a lot of work. Um, let me let me look at yeah, one. Let's, let's see. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and let's see when they drop the women's um, props because – Let's say they drop them with a decent amount of men's uh, NBA um, on the board still early enough. Like we could pair some of the Townsville fire plays with the uh, NBA. So they're not forced with just uh Bendigo um, place. Um, they've done that recently. They dropped the women's Aussie pretty early in the day. Um, while you look it up, I'll, I'll just share some of mine. I, I like Pirtle um, against Vooch in this matchup. Vooch is really bad on pick and roll, um, and Pirtle loves the high pick and roll. And yeah, Vooch is one of the worst pick and roll defenders, and Pirtle has, as a result, great history against Vooch, um, averaging around 20 points against him in the last six meetings. I think you can also consider his rebounds pretty low at 8.5, but there's some there's some bigs on Toronto that could eat up on the glass and eat into that, so maybe just points or PR. Um and then I know in our community at Discord, a lot of people, we like um, Desmond Bain for his rebounding here against the Lakers, who should chuck from three and a lot of bricks going up in a fast-paced matchup. So um, don't mind that as well. And what was the other one I had on the list? Um, oh, yeah, 80s rebounds, but it got bumped on price picks at 13. But on underdog, I, uh, still at 12 and a half unless it got bumped recently. Um, and then Clax, I was thinking either under his points or yes. two and a half block steals. Literally um, what I was looking up right now. The block steals or the under points? Un under something on him, yes. Yeah. As long as Giannis is healthy and, and going to play normal minutes, I mean, he's been hard to, to, to gauge in the last game he left early, right? So, Was it cool. Giannis or? Yeah. Yeah, well, so did Claxton, so don't forget that. He yeah. actually went out for a stint. Um, I still don't think he's he's 100% healthy, and he's just such a weird piece in this offense right now. Like, personally, I think he's very capable, super skilled. Um, they just have too many of the same things going on around him right now for him to be at his functional best. Is Ben back, do you know, or is he questionable still? Um, that would, think, that would help. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking at the injury report right now. Um, and we should get the, the afternoon one in about hour and hour and 20 minutes. Okay. While you look at that, um, I also don't mind Jalen Williams assist. I think, um, uh, you know, SGA out, he brings the ball up a lot and sets the offense, um, and play makes even when SGA was playing, um, which was obviously two and a half, but it's right there on the line. I mean, he just played Sacramento with a, SGA and he had four assists, so some sort of a fringe play, but just based on how they're running the offense, you can consider that. And he, he's he'll still play in blowout run more so than guys like Giddy or Dort. Um, and then assist wise, I mean, I have nightmares of Schroeder, but going with his assist, but it makes sense with D'Lo out, LeBron out. I feel like in this up pace matchup. He could definitely get it done. It's just a matter of uh, how the Lakers are shooting tonight. Um, so, yeah, and uh, Ben Simmons is out along with Sumner. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of news to keep an eye on today. Um, and with the uh, the Russell call there, uh, I really like it, especially if AD does play. Um, AD for whatever reason doesn't play. I don't know about their assist. That might be a little up in the air this time. I think he, is he not good to go or is he um, game time decision? Um, seeing game time, but that might be. Um, 
not from updated news. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I mean, seven flat. Yeah. You're just relying on the other, those like your pieces to hit their shots, but they've been, they've been um, doing pretty well. Um, even when LeBron went down. So yeah, I think you consider, especially in that pace. Um, He's probable. So should play. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of some early leans. Um, I don't know if you have anything else. No, we'll uh, roll through the process and get that list all chopped up and all all evil like for everyone, and hopefully have another good day. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I'll catch you in a little bit. Break down the NBA. Um, and Emerson asked, "Are you guys able to watch these games by chance? If so, where? They're free on YouTube. Um, it's on the FIBA. If, if you just um, on YouTube search uh, FIBA and then type in the team names." It'll bring up the stream, um, and yeah, you can just watch them on YouTube, and on uh, and their live streams. I hey, appreciate it, Renza. All right, uh, we got finish. We'll sign off here. Um, we got after tonight's game and tomorrow night's game. We have three more games. Um, two games will be on Friday night, late night Friday night. Um, you have the Capitals one last time. We get Jade one last time. Man, has she been balling against Ooh. Perth? Yes. So, um, and then we get probably the finals preview, um, Southside Flyers versus um, Townsville Fire, um, potentially, unless the Boomers can make a repeat um, defending champions. But that will be a really good game, um, Southside versus Townsville. It could be a defensive battle, but we'll see. Um, and then it, we finish off with um, the Boomers playing on Saturday night um, versus Sydney Flames. So. Three games this weekend, two on Friday night, one on Saturday night. Um, we'll definitely p- uh, pump out content for that. And then tomorrow mornings, um, starting early tomorrow morning, we have the return of Women's EuroLeague. I believe it's a, a full slate, eight games. Yep. So we're definitely going to be focusing on studying that tonight, getting out um, plays, and hopefully we, we get some plays late night tonight to start uh, breaking down and targeting um it's yeah it's gonna be a massive massive board um because pride space will dro- drop not only the euro league eight games but they'll drop probably some euro cup if you're feeling risky um want to add that in but yeah it's gonna be a massive board um so you you know depending on when they drop that they tend to drop it i imagine they're probably gonna drop it the euro league right after the aussie starts that's what they tend to do but if they give them earlier they can definitely combine those tonight with um the women's Aussie um, game that starts tonight. RE will um, try to get back maybe Friday, one last um, Aussie stream. If not, we can stream for the playoffs, which I think start sometime next in the next week. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll be in, we'll, we'll be in touch then. Um, but yeah, fun as always, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, hang on everyone. This is going to be arguably one of our busiest weeks we've had in a while. Um, you know, mentioned the two different NBA slates today, tomorrow, you mentioned the Euro League, and with all that sprinkled in between, you know, from here to Friday, it's going to be super busy. So I'm excited. Yeah, me too. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a long, long, long week, but well worth it. All right. Um, I will catch you later, Ian, and, and everyone else, um, and whoever watches this later on. Hope it helps. Um, yeah, this you can definitely check this video back out. Um, through the next two days because we cover the game that's tomorrow late tomorrow night as well so good luck everyone and we'll catch you next time peace let's fucking go we about to go big Fucking go. We going out blazing. Let, let, let's get honey. This is population. It's all a fantasy, but if I make the right pays, it pays automatically. Bank, bank, roll, showing that I know it, don't strategy. On a winning streak, I'm stacking a dose of the bookies, all get mad at me. Confident with power plays, not clicking on a flex today. Ten times the money, and we all about to get paid. Arrogant shots on the stream, they be killing it. Never gonna stop it, I like if you feeling it. Digging the players, they all never time. You can't make up your mind, and just go with your gut. Fantasize and toss your clown. Gabby Williams said, watch your mouth. They one and they two, I play the over, they come through. Jackie Young and Kelsey Plum, pick them both, we stacking them. Going big to the maximum, just push them in. Cashing on that fucking go. We about to go big. Kill him in the brass pit. Let's fucking go. We going out blazing. This is population.
about to go big. This is the game. We going out blazing. Let, let, let's get hunting. This is population.